times when she'd be sitting there just crying for a half an hour because she had all this emotional baggage. And adults have all this emotional baggage about, about, I don't know, they've been discouraged at some point when they were younger. And those are the big hindrances people have, I think. Just, just do it. Just enjoy it and do it. You know? Just do it. That's, to me, yeah. that's the favorite, that's the most profound thing anybody ever said. Just do it. Nike was hit a home run with that. Next uh, question. Next question. All right. I, there's a lot of things I would ask you. I'm not, when I do one of your courses, or I, when I, I've only really done one, the cage cracked. I've looked at a lot of lessons from your other stuff. Okay. You're rather intimidating in your approach. Not in, intimidating from a weekend warrior kind of guy who says, oh man, all that theory. So, I, when I, if, if I'm ready to do one of your courses or one of your lessons, I gotta clear my mind and just kind of be ready to, to soak it in. But you touched earlier on how you play different styles. I love playing classical. I love playing kind of flamingo type of fun stuff. I love playing electric. I love playing 12 string. I don't know on any given night what one I'm going to pick up. But how, what do you, I guess theory is what you would practice that, that does them all, but how do you, I don't know how to focus on one. I don't know how to, to keep one and which one, which when one When you say focus? one, do you mean one style? style? Yeah, I, I, I really, should I focus on one or do you just kind of let it all happen? No, no, because, well, I'll share something about me. Um, sometimes you have to do some pretty drastic things to get what you want to accomplish in life. I start off as a blues guitar player. I got bored pretty quickly because I had all the Johnny Miller and all the old blues stuff because the vocabulary is, it's limited. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of expression, but it's limited and I wanted to, I was listening to some jazz guys. Now this is when I was about 18. And so I remember I would buy how I learned how to play it was by ear and figuring things out. It was a record store. This lady ran a record store. Remember the old record store the lady had on uh, Park Street, right near Lighthouse Point? You've been here one time, right? Seventy-six. No, I might You're a little bit. Yeah, I think she sold it by then. Anyway, this old lady ran this record store, so I would go in. I would buy an album, James Gang Rides Again. Take it home, learn every lick on it from the beginning to the end. So it gets your ears on, dropping the needle down. So that's how you develop your ear, right? So, then I wanted to get into classical. I'll tell you a story about that some other time, about how I got hit with the arrow of classical guitar. It just hit me one day, because I was listening on the way to a gig. But, um, there was a point where I sold all my gear. I wasn't gigging, I was just teaching, and I was practicing classical five hours a day. Then I got an offer for a gig. I hadn't sold my hand, but I sold all my electric guitars. I didn't have that many too. Because I had to, I said, because prior to this, I'd be sitting there and I'd never finger picked. I didn't like folk guitar. I'm not a huge steel string fan. I mean, I, I play a little bit, but not much, you know, I'm rather really play classical. Um, but, so I put myself in this position where, okay, you can practice classical because you don't have electric. Because I was into Pat Martino and jazz. So I'd sit there and, and when you already have facility in one area, I was good with a pick. I'd go and I'd finger pick and like, <clears throat> you know, what's going on here? So for about a year, it was really tough because I'd get up in the morning, get a cup of coffee, and start practicing my classical guitar and just scales four hours a day, and then take a lunch break and practice. But the electric's over there calling me like a siren symbol. Why don't you pick me up? It'll be more gratifying because you can play this. You can't play classical yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I never put it on. I said, there's no reason why I can't play as well as I want to, whatever the standard might be. That's a personal thing. So, so what you have to do, in my opinion, because... I still have to do it. I don't practice classical very much anymore, yet I love it. So when I go out and do a solo guitar gig, I'm playing, and all my chops come back real quick. But if I want to stay on top of my classical game, I gotta just do that. Well, that doesn't help my jazz playing. Technically, it's different. Everything's different, you know? So when you want to do a lot of different things, you have to force yourself to say, okay, I'm just gonna do this. So what I might recommend for you would be say, let's say you like the flamenco stuff, you said, well, I like flamenco stuff, right? Mm -hmm. There's theory involved in there with harmonic, minor scale, frigid, down, all that kind of stuff, and a couple standard progressions. Flamenco's like blues in a way, you got a couple standard progressions. Yeah. So you might say, all right, I'm going to spend a month, to the exclusion of everything else, I'm just going to focus on this, and I'm going to really sink my teeth into this. 
At the end of the month, you won't be a master, but you know what? You'll have some ground and you'll say, okay. The next month, you might say, okay, I'm going to do some country licks, pedal steel or something. And maybe just try that. Because let's face it, I don't think any of you guys are in the position where you can practice eight hours a day. You've got lives. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're practicing six, seven hours a day, then you can say, come and do an hour of this, an hour of that, an hour of that. Well, I don't think any of us are in that position. So you have to pick and choose. And that discipline, it goes back to the discipline. You have to have the discipline to say, I want it. What's it going to take to get it? It's, and that's probably, you know, you, you made a statement. I don't want to be an intimidator. I really don't, man. I'm a nice guy. Well, not, not personally. But well, just, I know, but... but yeah, yes, almost, personally, he's intimidating. Personally, I'm just a jerk, but I'm talking about from the standpoint of information. Don't it's, make it's, a person. It, no, yeah, no. I'm not making a person. Hopefully, you want somebody who has a handle on all this information. And even though it's way up there, you're like, well... Do I want to start with somebody like that who can answer every question and can give me the tools to, to, to teach myself? Because remember, I, don't want to, I want to teach people to teach themselves. Mm -hmm. So that's hopefully what my course will do. Yeah. You know, I don't tab things out very rarely. Yeah. I don't give licks. I don't, you know, that's, there are other guys that do that. For me, I want to teach you what it, the nuts and bolts about. You want to be able to play this, play this, play that. I was going to say, you need to do a course, 50 licks, Brad Carlton thinks you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> That, that's my, that's <laughs> How can I do that? Because your licks are your licks. My licks are my, and I don't play licks. I know. Uh, I know what you're saying, and I've actually pondered that. I've pondered putting together, maybe not 50, but putting together I was going to say 25. 25 licks. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Let's do a little know. trivia thing here. I bet, I bet Allie doesn't even remember this. Do you remember way back, I think it was five licks, and they were in different styles. And they were killer because what I gave technical ideas and some of them involved tapping, some of them were blues licks. We ought to regurgitate those. Yeah, it was an early, it was an early TFU. Like, real, early. real early. I mean, it was back. First, but maybe. what I did is Brad said, okay, I want you to write five licks, you know, five or six, seven, eight licks in these different styles. And so what they did is they teach you some techniques for this style, as many of the courses do. <coughs> You know, and I might do something like that. I've thought That's, about that. that. That would be a fascinating thing to, to see and to study. This. But, but what's going to happen if I give you a lick? What if I give you a lick that you can't play because you don't have the chops? Are you going to dismiss it or are you going to work from it? Be basically lazy. And, and I'm not talking about fast. I'm just well, talking about if it involved dexterity or something like that. A reach. Well, I, I, tend, I tend to, if, I, if I'm... If I'm in the time frame where I'm in a, a practice mood, where I'm looking at level, what you call level two or level three stuff, mm -hmm. I will work on it, and I will work on it and work on it. But I don't get to that time frame very often. In a week, if I, if I actually spend an hour in a week on a level or two or three areas, mm -hmm. that's a good week for me. Usually, I was complaining earlier, I seem to spend a just sitting there noodling in front of the TV with my family or whatever. Or B, I tend to work on songs in band and, mm -hmm. and learn in a song. I'll put the earphones on, plug into a little cassette there, or CD player, and, and, and work on taking the tab I pulled off the internet and comparing it to that song and figuring out what my part's going to be and my other guitars be. And I love that. Right. Or I love taking a new pedal or an old pedal and I'll spend hours with the pedal and I'll forget what time it is. But I just don't sit down enough to do that. But I have, and I will struggle through it. I can probably do most of it the chop-wise if I practice. I'm, I'm lucky, I'm, I'm lucky, I'm fairly dexterous. But I don't retain a lot of it. Retain facility or retain theory knowledge? Retain theory knowledge in that because I don't keep coming back to it. That's why I say when, when, when your course is intimidating to me, it's because, you know, the last time I looked at theory might have been six months ago and now I'm starting that makes a, sense. a Brad Carlton course. Now, oh, God, I, what, what did I learn on that last one that I need to apply? Okay, here? a little pop quiz, guys. What is it that I am a proponent of that I always suggest in my courses? Right, you should yeah, write it out. Write it you know what? I see that now. It's my friend. There are no dark areas. 
I bet for you there are some spots. Key of A, it's like nice bright. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Am I right? Oh exactly. But if I say we're gonna be in D flat, I'm like, oh, somebody turned the lights out a little bit here. Yeah, exactly. Well, look, I have been there. You know what? When I was, I started off as a blues player, so you learn the licks, and Johnny Winter's playing an E and G and A guitar keys, right? And I'm ripping an A, and I'm like, okay, this is great. So I go to playing B flat, and I'm like, wait a minute. What's going on? It's just moved one fret, but what happens? It's There's not no familiar dots. territory. No dots, a whole thing. No dots. I said, that was, I said, okay, this is going to stop right now. And that's when I started plotting stuff out, and I said, what I would do, I would spend one week in one key. A whole week, just staying on one key of F. Learn a key of F until I could see it in my mind's eye. The next key, another key, you know, and just like that. So again, it goes back to, I don't want any weak spots. To me, I tell people, look, we'll go back to Engve. Ingve has strengths in this column right here, right? I read a thing, and I can understand his totals. Uh, he was supposed to play on some guy's album. The guy was having guest guitarists come in. This guy's like a jazz fusion guy or something. Comes in, Ingve's sitting there struggling, couldn't play the lick. Why? Because it's not part of his vocabulary. Well, he's it's different. Comfortable. You know, Pat Martino is a monster player at what he does. But what he does, he doesn't do a whole lot of chord work. He couldn't handle a classical guitar. He's a single line player, right? And then you look at players that, that do a lot more, play a lot more guitar, play like a piano, okay? That's more technique than just playing single note lines. And I love it all. But the point is, you gotta, if you want to be able to do it all, you got to say, okay, I don't want any weaknesses. So to me, I tell people, get rid of your weaknesses. I don't ever practice strengths, ever. You know why? It's real rewarding, ego-wise, because it's like, wow, that's easy. That's the stuff that I can already play, and, oh, I could keep practicing this, and it's that tall pillar that's a skyscraper above everybody else, but that's not what it's about. When I start to practice stuff that I'm comfortable with, I sort of slap myself and say, nope, play something you can't play very well. Play something that is that dark area. Play something that challenges you. So you're always putting yourself in that state of mind where you're saying, I want to work on my weaknesses. 